Now let's talk about the statement of cash flows because another important issue for any business is how it manages its cash. So the questions we want to answer here include where does the company get its cash? Where does the cash go? And will there be enough cash to pay the bills? So accounting provides answers to these questions with a financial statement that's called the statement of cash flows. A statement of cash flows reports a company's cash inflows and outflows from its operating, investing, and financing activities. So a statement of cash flows reports a company's cash inflows and outflows from these three areas, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. So let's go through each one of those. Operating activities of a business include activities such as the purchase of supplies, the payment of employees, sale of products. Um, investing activities, though, include activities like buying and selling assets. So investing in the business or investing in other assets. Financing activities include activities such as generating funds from the from borrowing or um, raising capital in other ways, and then repayment of those funds to the creditors and to the investors. So here's the basic structure of the statement of cash flows. Remember, this is a financial statement that's showing sources and uses, inflows and outflows of cash over a specific period of time. So the purpose is to inform users about how and why the company's cash changed during the period. The basic structure of this statement starts with the cash flows provided or used by operating activities. And that section typically starts with net income. And then um, it includes cash flows provided by or used by financing or investing first and then financing activities. And those are gonna be added or subtracted depending on if they're positive or negative to get us to the net increase or decrease in cash. So here's an example. Again, we're continuing with the same company, Lawn Services. So here's their statement of cash flows for the month ending June 30th. So again, we've got the company name, the name of the statement, and then the time reference, June 30th. So this one is the month of June. And so we're showing a net change in cash from June 1st to June 30th of $194. And then the rest of the statement shows us how we arrived at that change. And so $44 in the change comes from operating activities. Nothing happened with regards to investing activities. So the rest of it comes from financing activities. So the ending cash balance on this statement should agree with the cash balance on the balance sheet. Now that we've covered our basic financial statements, let's talk about the qualitative characteristics of accounting information. So accounting is a very quantitative process, um, and the financial statements that we've looked at are full of numbers, of course, but accounting information has to also possess certain qualitative characteristics in order for it to be useful. So we've got seven qualitative characteristics that we're going to go through. Here are the first four. Um, first, we have understandability, relevance, reliability, and comparability. And so accounting information has to be understandable by those who are willing to study the information with a reasonable amount of diligence. And then second, relevance refers to the capacity of accounting information to make a difference in decisions. So it's going to be pretty closely tied to the capacity of feedback value or predictive value. Feedback value, to be clear, refers to the ability to assess past performance. So it's, it's is this information relevant for us to review past information, and then predictive value refers to the ability to help us form expectations about future, future performance. Now let's move on to reliability. To be considered reliable, 
accounting information should be verifiable. It should have representational faithfulness and it should be neutral. And then lastly, for these first four, comparability refers to the ability to use accounting information to compare or contrast the financial activities of different companies. So now let's just wrap up these qualitative characteristics. Um, the last three of these seven, consistency. This refers to the ability to use accounting information to compare or contrast the financial activities of the same entity over time. So comparability is across entity, entities, consistency is within one entity over time. Materiality is a concept that's closely related to relevance in that it refers to the threshold at which an item begins to affect decision making. Items are material when they're large enough to possibly affect decision making. So we have to figure out at what dollar threshold is this information really important, meaning it's going to have an impact on the decisions that we make or that the firm would make. And then lastly, conservatism refers to the manner in which accountants deal with uncertainty regarding economic situations.